Hey, it's David Colmeyer, The Problem Solver. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today, we're going to be speaking in regards to trick-or-treating, Halloween, candy, all that good stuff. Um, as usual, I wanted to bring up a topic that kind of concerned me as a parent. Um, in Los Angeles, they actually, a few days ago, they actually caught somebody with uh, Skittles with candy. And inside the candy, they located fentanyl, which is uh, a drug which is deadly. And I was very, very concerned in regards to the situation because they, they didn't catch the guy, but they, they figured out exactly possibly who it is and they're investigating it. But what concerned me was is that there's candy such as sweet tarts and so on where they were trying to uh, transport it on a plane. So it concerns me greatly for the fact is, you know, what was the mindset of this person or other people doing? Um, Danny, in 27 years as you were a police officer, what are your thoughts? Have you ever had any experiences with um, people transporting or giving away candy that could be controlled substance or something illegal that would hurt kids? You know what, when, I, when we were going through Halloween when we were kids, they always, and I don't know if you remember this, they used to x-ray the candy. Do you remember that? You used to so, actually yeah. take it to the hospital, put the bag in it, x-rayed it for, you know, whatever, razor blades, whatever. But this is definitely something different. This is something serious because especially if the bag's already closed and it's not open, how are you going to know? How are you going to know if it's in there or not? Beja, what are your thoughts regards when you have your kid, you know, going trick-or-treating. I mean, it became an American tradition to go out, knock on doors, and to, to take candy. But we are taking candy from strangers, and I think people totally have forgotten about that. Well, first of all, this was already brought to my attention by my daughter. She saw it on TikTok. Oh, wow. Um, but if I remember, didn't we have this issue before with some kind of powder that was deadly that they were handing out to kids? I mean, I think over the years, there's been different things, I mean, yeah. whether drug dealers or people yeah. trying to transport, you know, illegal controlled substances. Right. They're, they are trying to be creative to get it, whether it's transporting it or to get it to young children. Right. There was another question that you asked, um, and well, like, what are the intentions? I think it's just to kill kids, right. honestly. Like, people are messed up, and you have to be aware and concerned, and you have to just really just go through all the candy, I would say, as a parent, really um, know what you're looking for. And um, just be aware. It, it's such a shame because, I mean, you have young kids. You have young kids. My kids, they want Halloween and no problem at all. Things have changed. Now you have to be scared about everything. These kids can't even be kids. They can't even go to Halloween without mm -hmm. there's some kind of scare out there. You know, it, it's horrible. And as a parent, I'd be scared to death. They say it's to get kids, you know, addicted and yeah. they want to, you know, reel them in. But, I mean, these are full fentanyl pills. Right. Like, they can... They can kill an adult. Right. And you say inspect it. Yeah, you can inspect it, but how are you going to know if that bag's sealed? Because you can buy sealers anywhere. They could seal that up. That's well, I think, true. So this you is know? a bag of Skittles in general. I mean, I think what comes down to it, a parent, they should inspect the bag in general because there could okay. be a little hole, right? So even if there was a little hole and we, we just emptied, we emptied some of the candy out, right. right? This looks okay here by looking at it. You know, it just looks like regular Skittles. Um, but what happens is they can empty the whole bag out. And, and what happened in Los Angeles, there was all fentanyl. It was straight blue pills. Right. But fentanyl these days also come in different colors because... So now they're rainbow. There's, right. there's different colors. So we need to be extremely careful. I think even like with Skittles, you need to look to see if there's any, um, any whether there's writings, whether there's an S on it or not. But you really have to inspect it in general. And the ones that they used over in Los Angeles, even the sweet hearts that they had, basically they were all blue pills. So, I mean, I think it's the key is to see... Are they all the same color? Should they be, right. you know, multicolored in general? Also, when you open this up, here I'm looking here in the in the sweet hearts. Um, if you open up front, there's mixed mixed colors. It looks okay in general. Right. They all look like the same shape as well. But it's very easy for people just to take things out and seal it up with a little bit of glue. Um, the question really comes down to is this: I, I saw online because I did some research before the podcast today. Is that the goal was to for our message to have kids take their candy, you know, home if they're with their parent and have them inspect it before they basically eat the candy in general. Again, they are going to homes that are strangers, that people are giving things that we just don't know. Right. We're not here to scare people and scare kids in general or parents. Right. And then also like what to look for specifically. So if it is fentanyl pills, right, the pressed ones, they're going to have an M on it, correct? Right. They're going to have a, a line probably on the other side um, with some type of number on it. Right. Um, anything that like looks like a pill. And if, if it does look unusual, you always can call poison control where you can describe the pill in general. You can call 311, which is the non-emergency number, 911, which is the police if you want if you really feel something's bad. Also, years ago, you know, even though there's like kind of an urban myth of people uh, putting razor blades, you know, inside candy. Right. And I looked up one that was in, it was in Connecticut. The guy said, oh, by accident, three razor blades, you know, fell into the candy. And it was three <sighs> razor blades that fell into this, you know, and he got arrested for that it was in Connecticut. But the bottom line is anything can happen. Again, we're not here to scare people. But I want to bring one thing, which is kind of interesting. Some people online say, hey, 
you know, the DEA basically believes that it's not a big deal, that, you know, the children don't have to worry. But the DEA never came, you know, to us a few weeks ago and says, hey, um, you know, people could be illegally transporting fentanyl in candy boxes to be careful. But now that it's out there, they're saying, oh, well, we don't think it's high risk. I mean, we just don't know. And if one kid dies, that's one kid way too much uh, in regards to not being aware of this in general. I, I, I totally agree. And I think it's to the point. Now, my kids are older but and your kids are younger, but I think it's to the point you only want to take your kids Halloween into a house you know, your neighbors, your relatives, your friends. I think going to a stranger's house, unfortunately, that time's over. I, I, I just think it is. I don't even know what to say. Honestly, yeah. my daughter was freaked out. She wanted to have a Halloween party instead of, you know, going trick-or-treating. Uh-huh. Um, but even just with the razor blade story... Uh, Gosh, I, I don't know what to say. It's it's scary. And I'll guarantee you, every and, Halloween. And you think about these shootings. I mean, the, yeah. what are, what are those people thinking? Right. They're like they're aiming to kill. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was somebody out there handing out this candy to try to kill these children. Oh, uh, every every Halloween something happens. I will guarantee you something is found. Guaranteed. So, so the goal with this podcast is to get it out to the public, especially in Clark County, and if it's able to get out to the whole United States in general, that'd be great. We set up checkyourkidscandy.com so that this can go out to all the parents. They can watch it to be more aware in general. So it's checkyourkidscandy.com. Please send this out to all friends, family members, anyone that's going out there for trick-or-treating. Again, mm-hmm. we're not here to scare people. It's just to be aware this is something very, very unusual. It's bad enough that at one point in time, the, the the fentanyl was changed to look like candy, but now they're actually physically placing it into actual, uh, you know, containers or, you know, like the Skittles or the Sweet Tarts, the boxes, and inside the packaging. This is the first time that I've ever seen it. So I am concerned. I want parents to basically check your kids' candy. It's the, it's the, it's something you could do to be safe in this Halloween season. So um, I really hope the message gets out. Did you you mention yeah, something else? Yeah, but just staying on the Halloween topic for a little bit, Dave, could you... I think we were talking before the podcast. What is Operation Scarecrow? You know, Beijing, I'm not sure if you know about this at all. And again, not to scare people again, but Operation Scarecrow is where that law enforcement, especially in this state, that they will check upon sex offenders if they have their lights shut off in their homes and they're not participating in any type of trick-or-treating exercise or, or events or they cannot go out that night. Um, and their lights have to be off within the homes, which means, you know, normally when the lights are in the home, we're enticing people to come to the home on Halloween because they think, oh, someone's home, maybe they're going to give out candy. Right. All the lights must be off in that home during the nighttime for trick-or-treating if you're a sex offender. And I think there's over a few thousand sex offenders in this state. And again, you know, people make mistakes in life, but they are registered sex offenders, whether you feel bad or the situation. They have to follow the registry. Yeah. They have to follow. That's so Operation Scarecrow is where law enforcement is going out there to check, you know, at uh, different Halloween events that they're staying away from children and they're not participating in giving out any candy. And most people don't know about Operation Scarecrow. So I want people to be careful with this because, again, if you see the lights are off, there's no reason to send your children to a home where their Absolutely lights are off. Not. It's not, you know, if their lights yeah. are on and there's no Halloween decorations, that we need to be careful. Right? I think that's great that you guys, um, that you're bringing awareness to this, honestly, because I don't think a lot of people know. I've seen many times being out trick-or-treating with my child that, you know, they'll still tell them to try the house. Yeah. Not even Like you never knowing. know, right? Yeah, yeah, you just never know. Right. So. And I, I think the other thing is parents, and you know, I, I can't think of a site right off the top of my head, but you can Google who is a sex offender in your area. It'll show different houses that they'll show their picture, where they live. I think that's a good thing to know mm-hmm. who is living in your neighborhood, because I'll tell you what, I've done it in my neighborhood and I was shocked how many sex offenders were in my neighborhood. Is that something that we can pull up on the Problem Solver Vegas? Of course. You know, we'll have I a link set up, which is a great idea. We'll have a link set up for sex offender registry. And then if you go out for Halloween, at least that you know, you actually, a lot of times you'll know the addresses, but some, it just may be uh, a dot in the community. So you may be more aware with the different tier levels. Sometimes there's a photo, sometimes there's an address, and sometimes it's just what street it is, but it doesn't give you the exact depending upon the tier level. But I think it's a great idea. We're going to add that to the problem solver.vegas. You can click on there. You can put in your zip code, your street, and then you can find out basically if someone's a sex offender. Again, it's for you're aware for you and your children to be careful. Again, uh, times are different now. Um, and a lot of people do suffer from mental illness, and we want to, we want people to be careful. The last thing I want to share is basically, you know, a lot of kids are on the street, and t- statistically, they're more likely to get into a car accident than probably, you know, with with, uh, you know, someone putting fentanyl inside any of these candy boxes or the sex offenders. They're more likely to get hit by a car because there's so many kids out in the community. So again, uh, we need to be careful, um, especially if they're crossing the street. Uh, maybe it pays to set up, uh, you know, kind of 
one street where they don't keep crossing the street, especially if you have young children. And then kids need to be careful, especially with that. So it's three things. Halloween, basically, it's check your kids' candy. It's don't go up to homes that have the lights off. Three, sex offender registry, we want to be careful in regards to that aspect. And actually, the fourth thing is, um, is be careful with your kids when they're walking in the community. It's still dark out. It's getting darker now a little bit earlier. So for Halloween, please be careful with that. I just want to add one thing. Believe it or not, what he said about being safe with cars and traffic and the kids. When I was in second grade, this is a true story. Kid in my class, him and a, and a girl were out Halloweening together, was killed, in a, was killed crossing the street. Two kids in my class when I was in second grade. Yeah. I mean, that I was really that's scarring. A big thing here in yeah. Vegas as well. You know, yep. just a lot of pedestrians being hit. So. Oh, pedestrians get hit all the time. Driving here is horrible. Mm -hmm. It's horrible. So you protect your kids. Watch them. As usual, the problem solver, the goal is to help solve problems and to also share some messages when things come out. So we hope that um, the tips for Halloween and especially checking your kids' candy, uh, we hope that message gets out there to protect children. Uh, like I said, we all have children, and we hope that everyone takes this message, passes it along. And again, the problem solver is here to help people that have problems. Whatever we do, we're 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the problem solver Vegas 702-999. 1111 and thanks Danny and thanks Bezier and thanks for everyone listening today and we'll see you next week.